The last part of this plant we haven't talked about yet is the flower. Plants have flowers to reproduce and make new plants. Flowers are specifically adapted to the type of environment they live in, as well as to their method of pollination. Some flowers are specifically designed to attract insects because of their color or scent. Others depend on the wind to carry their pollen. Before getting fully into plant reproduction, let's have a look at the parts of a flower. This green part underneath is called the sepal. It protects the flower before it opens. The petals, you probably already know. The petals are usually brightly colored to help attract pollinators to the flower. The next two parts are the male and female parts of the flower. The stamen is the male part, and it is made of two structures, the anther and filament. The anther produces and releases pollen. Pollen contains sperm. The filament supports the anther. The number of stamen inside one flower depends on the type of flower. This one has six that you can see. The pistil is the female part of the flower and has three main structures, the stigma, style, and ovary. The stigma is this tip. It is sticky to catch pollen grains. The style is a tube that connects the stigma and ovary. When pollen is stuck to the stigma, a pollen tube then grows down the style. The sperm from the pollen travels down this pollen tube. The ovary is a tiny chamber that contains the plant's eggs. The eggs are also called ovules. The sperm from the pollen will fertilize one egg, which then will form a seed. Inside a seed is a tiny plant called an embryo, as well as food for the plant to live on until it is able to grow big enough to make its own. Because flowers have both a pistil and several stamen, pollen from the flower can fertilize its own eggs. This is called self-pollination. If pollen is carried by insects or wind to a different flower, this is called cross-pollination. The pollen will only be able to fertilize a plant of its same species though. When people get involved by choosing specific plants with special traits and encouraging these to reproduce, it is called selective breeding. Plants may be chosen because of their ability to produce a lot of flowers or fruit and so on or maybe because they are better able to withstand harsh conditions. Plants may also be selectively bred because they are more resistant to disease or pests. With all of these types of reproduction, the new plant created is slightly different from the parent plants. When it comes to plants, there are also ways they can asexually reproduce. This is when one plant grows a new plant from its roots, stem, or leaves. The new plant will be exactly the same genetically as to the one it came from. Three types of asexual reproduction include layering, grafting, and cuttings. Layering is when a stem is bent down and covered with soil. Roots then grow and a new plant starts growing from it. A plant that naturally spreads this way is strawberries. Grafting is when a branch from one tree is attached to another and then begins to grow. Fruit trees as well as roses are often grafted. Cuttings is when a small section of a plant is cut off and replanted to grow a new plant. Lavender is a plant that does well growing from cuttings. And with that, we have learned about all the parts of this plant. Check out the links below if you missed any of the videos on the roots, stem, or leaves.